As someone who works with adult colleagues and children on a daily basis, do you see a difference in the way they think and the way they approach solving a question? Do you mean how the adults approach it or versus how the kids approach it? Yeah. You mean comparing the adults and the kids? Um, there's a broad spectrum within the kids' population. There are, there are kids who are young for their age and there are kids who are old for their age. Um, people like yourselves, for example. Your, your, your thinkers, your decision makers, your planners, um, that's a great place to be. Um, as far as I'm concerned, one of the most important skills that a kid can develop, both in high school and college, is, is a time management and how to block your time so that you know what you have to do and when you have to do it so that you don't get stressed because all of a sudden something pops up and you didn't know that it was on your schedule. So I, I like to see that kids are, are moving in that direction little by little. Uh, frequently during the course of my, my teaching career, when kids feel particularly stressed, I kind of like pull them off to the side and I say, all right, you got a lot on your plate. Let's see if we can schedule your time. Let's see if we can block out your time and see why this is making you crazy. Because when you know what you're going to do and when, it kind of relieves your stress and enables you to get through, through your day. An organized life is a happy life. Not OCD, but an organized life is a happy life. And I think that's a, that's a big thing. By the way, not all teachers are as organized as others. No naps. Yeah. What else do you do to help your students prepare for the next phase of their lives? One of the nicest compliments a kid paid me um, was, uh, was writing me a letter when he graduated a couple of years ago. And, um, and in this letter, he pointed out that, yeah, I taught him chemistry, but he felt he learned more from me than just chemistry. He felt he learned how to deal with life, deal with what he's going through, deal with what he's going to be going through as he goes into college. And um, you know, that was, you get letters like this from kids over the years, and it's kind of like a wake-up call. And you realize that it's not just the subject matter. I mean, that's what I'm here for, to teach the subject matter. But you're also here to, to ease adolescents through undoubtedly the most rocky and difficult time of their life. And uh, if I can do that, um, then I'm happy to do it. It's, it's, it's kind, of a, kind of a giving back type of a thing. You know, I don't have to speak to kids about that, but it's something I want to. And if a kid approaches me and says, I need, I need to talk, or I've got something I need to work out, then I'm certainly going to be at their disposal. Do you believe that the information you teach students will come in handy during future phases of their lives? No, absolutely not. No, <laughs> absolutely not. So when kids say, what do I need this for in life? I say, you don't need it. This is chemistry. All right, you may go on through the sciences, right? You may major in science. You may become a doctor. You may become a, 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 you know, some a medical professional where this chemistry is going to be necessary. What I like to think I do more than anything else in my class is to expand a, a kid's ability to think and to think for themselves, to make decisions and to think critically. That's an important thing. So many kids are really comfortable and used to being team members, members of a group, and they function well within the group. But being an individual, that's something that people have to develop and have to work on. So one of the things I like to push on my kids, and I say this when we do, when we do work in class frequently, is work by yourself. Practice working as an individual. I know you can be part of a team. I know you can be part of a group. You've done it all your life. You guys play team sports up the wazoo, which is why you don't have enough time to breathe. You got all these team sports to do. But learning how to be an individual and to work on your own, that's a skill that everybody needs to work on. Everybody needs to work on. So that's, you know something? That's what I like to teach. I like to think that I teach people how to work as individuals, how to be themselves, because you know what? This is Wheatley and it's great and it's wonderful. You love your friends, you BFFs everywhere, right? Well, you're going to college soon and you get new BFFs. You graduate from college and they'll be gone too. But what are you going to have left? You're only going to have yourself left. So develop that. Be an individual. How is grandparenthood different than parents? It's the greatest. It's so simple. It's so easy. When you're a parent, you got to worry about doing everything right. Because you're molding this child, right? You want this child to be perfect and, and intelligent and talented and athletic and skilled and with a wonderful personality and all of that. When you're a grandparent, parenting skills are second nature. You don't even have to think about them. You know, you got the instinct how to be a parent. 
and I don't care if I do things that are right, I just want to make her happy. When, when uh, Mrs. Doc and I have been babysitting for Natalie, and she's having a wonderful time, and then my son complains afterwards that we're spoiling her, I said, doing a good job here, doing a good job. That's the difference. Great big difference. Very, very fun. Lots of fun. Even more fun than my friends told me. My friends always said, when you become a grandparent, because we're the last of our friends to become grandparents, when you become a grandparent, you are going to love it, because it is the best. It's, it's very easy, it's always fun, and there's only positives. The only negative is that, you know, they live in Washington, D.C., so I don't get to see her as often as I would like to. How has your relationship with your children changed as they grew up, got married, and had kids of their own? Good questions. Well, good questions. Um, I have two sons, as you know, many of you know. They're grown boys. They, they're, I mean, call them the boys, but you know, they're 38 and 35, for God's sake. I don't know how that happened so quickly. And, um... I gotta tell you something, one of the things that I am most proud of in my life is my relationship with my, my young men, with my guys. And at some point, it's an interesting thing, some point after they got out of college, the relationship kind of morphed from dad and son to peers. They call me when they have problems, when they have decision making situations that they'd like to, to talk about with me, but for the most part, we are, we are peers and we hang out as peers and we chat as peers and that's the best part. Um, here's a secret. My friends are very jealous of the relationship that I have with my boys. My boys hug me, kiss me, kiss me on the mouth. Yes, I'm proud to say that, on the mouth because they're glad to see me, because, they, you know, because of the relationship that we built from early on. Does this have to do with the fact that I was close with them from the time that they were little? Does this build on the fact that maybe because I changed them when they were little kids and that I wasn't afraid to get poop under my fingernails when they were young? It's possible. I think it is. I think that getting involved in your children's lives is, is very, very important. Um, and it pays off down the road in the kind of relationship you have with them when they're adults. I love my relationship with my sons. Again, I just wish they were close. You know, one of them is in California and married, and the other one's in Washington, D.C. He's the father of my granddaughter.